Hi everyone and welcome back to our Ability System series in UE4. In this episode we're going to work on our spell book. So currently our abilities are locked in at the bottom here. Okay, We can't change them or add any others. So what we're going to be having is a little button that we can toggle off and on a uh, window which will show us our spell book which is all the spells that the player has and then we're going to add the functionality to drag and drop them onto your action bar replacing whatever's in that slot. Before we do the drag and drop though, we're going to need to make the actual UI for our spellbook itself. So let's get started with that. So to do this, we're going to go into our UI folder that we've made already and make another folder in here called spellbook. And in here, we're going to create a new user interface widget blueprint spellbook UI. And this is going to be the main container window which houses all your spells. Okay, so it's quite a simple one. Uh, first of all, we're going to get rid of our canvas panel, and instead we're going to put in a um, a a uh, boulder. Let's do a boulder. Yeah. So I'm trying to think what way we should make it look. Uh, so I'm going to go to a boulder and let's give it a uh, color. So brush color, and I'm going to give it my generic background gray. And inside here, we're going to put in a vertical box. And inside that vertical box, we're going to put in some text to be the title of our window. So let's drag that in. And we're going to also have a scroll box, which will contain all the various spells inside our player character. So I'm just going to make this text here say spellbook. And we'll make it a bit bigger, so we'll make it 32. And we'll make it center to line as well. So we can go down, justify it in the center, and it'll center it like so. So the only thing that we need to do here is we need to make sure our scroll box has a title and is variable because we'll be changing what's in it um, during the game at runtime. So let's change the name of this to Spellbook Container and tick is variable and we'll click compile for this we'll close that we'll come back to that in a minute next we need to make the actual slots to contain all the various spells so we want to go into add new user interface widget blueprint and call it spellbook slot UI and this is simply just going to be the slot that we have inside our uh, window so it's quite simple we can get rid of the canvas panel, we a size box, and that size box we're going to do a width and height override and put in 128 and 128. And I'm going to change the fill screen to desired so we can see what we're working with. In here, we're going to have a border, and that border again is going to have that grey. So brush color into my gray. And then we're going to have an image in here. And this image is going to be the image of the spell icon. Um, so we know what spell it is. So this thing will be variable. So we need to make sure this is variable here. So let's do this properly by naming it spell image. And I'm going to put a little padding around it and give it painting a five so you get a nice little neat border around it hit compile and that will do next we need to make it so we can change this image in runtime okay so go over to your graph and we need to determine what spell this thing actually is so on the variables go new variable and go ability and this will be the ability class so go ability class reference and then we're going to go on to the pre-construct event and drag your ability class out and choose get now we want to get the default thumbnail for this ability so come out of there and type in defaults and from there we'll get the ability details which we can right click and split to get the thumbnail icon Drag your spell image out and get it 
and then we can set brush from texture and that texture will be this icon that we've got determined inside of ability so all the pre-construct is going to do is going to set up our UI slot to have the correct brush okay so let's go back to my design view and make sure we save it and close that down uh, oh sorry I forgot go back to your slot and make sure ability is set to editable and expose on spawn and hit compile okay so next work we're going to do is go back into our spell book because we need to make it so we can um, build our spell list out dynamically so to do that we need to get access to our actual spell book component or our ability component on the player now currently we don't have the component made yet so let's right click blueprint class actor component and we'll call this abilities uh, we go actor abilities and open this up this is a component that we can attach to any actor and we can set a basic variable which is going to be the container for all our spells so we'll call this one spells or we call it abilities whatever you want to do and the variable type for this is the ability class so go to ability class reference and this will be an array hit compile uh, there's loads of ways you can do this you don't have to do it as a way you could do it as like a map for example and have booleans attached to it say whether or not you've unlocked it um, whatever the case may be you basically need a list of basically all the abilities okay so an array is the simplest way of doing this so with that done we can now save and close that and let's attach that to the player so we know what we're working with so let's go into my third person and attach that component here actor abilities like so now with that there I can go over to the right hand side you see default section it says spells I can now add spells to my character here so I can add fireball I can add a at the holy ground fortitude and curse okay so I've got those four abilities attached to this player now I can close that and return back to my spell book. So the idea is a spell book on the graph, uh, when it's constructed or pre-construct, we'll do it in the we'll do it in the we're we doing the construct. No need for the pre-construct. And in the construct, we need to grab hold of that uh, the the uh, ability component that we're working with and the array inside of it and build out our slots for it. So we need a variable, and that variable will be the ability well in fact we're only going to ever see the players one so we actually don't need to do this we can delete that so we're only ever going to see the players um like your own players spells anyway so what you can do here is just get hard code it into here so get player character cast to the name of your actor for the player character in this case it's a third person character as a third person character we're going to get abilities, actual abilities, and then from there, we get spells. Now we've got the array of all the spells the player has. We can do a for each loop for these this array. So do a for each loop, and I'll go through each of the items inside that array. And for each item, we're going to add a slot. So we're going to create a widget, and we're going to choose the spellbook slot UI. And now you'll see a space for ability there. If you do not see this here, it's probably because you didn't tick it to be exposed on spawn. So make sure you go back to your spellbook slot and tick that to be exposed on spawn. Connect up to your array element. And there you go. So now you've got that there. We now need to add it to our spellbook container, which is the scroll box. So drag your spellbook container variable out and choose get. And from here, go add child. And the child widget is going to be this return value from this create widget. Hit compile and we're done for now. We'll come back to this in a minute. 
we'll close that down. Next is to actually get it showing on the screen. So currently we're working with a HUD. Okay, we've got heads up display here. And what we're going to do is we're going to create the spellbook UI on the screen here and hide it. Then we'll make it toggle visibility on a key press or a button on the screen. So find uh, in your panel uh, palette here and search for spellbook. You'll see spellbook UI. You can now drag this out onto your canvas and you can now resize it to whatever size you want your window to actually be. So I'm going to do like this. Okay. It doesn't matter if it overlaps other stuff because we'll be toggling it off and on on a key press. Hit compile. Okay. So scroll down on the right hand side and well actually first of all let's leave it visible so we can see it working if it works uh, grabbing all the spells from the player character. So let's close that and push play and now you can see it has added these slots to our spellbook. However you can see they've come out all stretched and weird and not what we want. Okay so let's work on getting that correct. Oh wrong one. So let's go into our spellbook and we need to go and have a look at how this works. So to test this out if we drag in our spellbook slot into our container you can see it's been stretched along the whole entire size. That's not what we want to do. Okay. Instead we want to limit the size of it by using its own size because they all have like a size box on it so you can use that there. So what we're going to do here is change the alignment to horizontal alignment to the left here and you can see it will now adjust correctly. So what we need to do is go onto your graph and on this create spellbook widget UI and add child return value is what we're going to do to change the alignment of it. So set uh, not not set horizon alignment. Apologies, we need to make a little adjustment. I've made a bit of a mistake. Um, if we go back to the designer, instead of using a scroll box uh, exclusively, we need to put a wrap box inside of it. Um, so I'm going to do a wrap box inside of that, and I'm going to untick my spellbook container and go to my wrap box and tick that on. As this will be the container we need to use. So I'm just going to name it container, compile that, and go to my graph. And in the graph, we're going to get rid of this and get rid of this. Drag a container out, get, and do add child to wrap box. And the content for that be there. And hit compile now. We go back to the design view. And you can go down to the user created section and drag a slot in. And you'll see now that they are aligned to the left okay and it'll wrap around so if i delete these ones and hit compile now and in the game you see all our spells associated up here now i'm gonna put a bit of padding between each of these so it doesn't look too jumbled up so i'm gonna go back into my spell book and in my container here we're going to go down to where it says inner slot padding x and y and we'll put in a whole uh, number first, we'll go uh, 25, 25, and let's see how that looks. Okay, not bad, but I want a bit bit more in the X. Okay, so I'm going to go into my spell book and change the X here to 125. Hit play, and now I've got a bit more something that I want to see. Okay, I'm going to expand it open again. And let's go to 200 and hit compile and push play. So that's something a bit more like what we want to see. Okay. And so next job is to make it so we can toggle it off and on on a key press or a button on the screen. Let's just do a key press for now. So I'm going to first of all go into my HUD. And in my HUD, I'm going to make this by default hidden. So I'm going to just click on it and scroll down and you can change its visibility to hidden. Next, I'm going to go into my graph and add a function on here. So I go new function, 
and do this call this one toggle spellbook and on toggle spellbook what we're going to do is going to check what the current visibility of this spellbook is and then do the opposite of it now to do that we need to be able to get the spellbook ui's visibility so drag your spellbook ui variable out that's your reference to your spellbook get visibility and we're going to do a switch on this so switch and you can see all the different sections are different types of visibility this thing can have so if it's visible we're going to make it hidden so i'm going to drag my spellbook ui out again set visibility and we're going to make that hidden likewise we're going to do the opposite for hiding it um, for making it hit, uh, visible sorry so like so next we're going to go into our um, visible section so when it goes visible we're going to get the player controller and on the player controller we're going to come out of there and set input mode to game and UI the widget to focus is going to be the spell book so drag that out again and then from the get player controller we can do set show mouse cursor and turn that to be true now you want to do the opposite for making it hidden so set input mode to game only and then set show mouse cursor to false and hit compile and so now that's hidden in the game and we've got a function that will turn it off and on we now need to be able to actually toggle it off and on so I'm going to go into my edit project settings and I'm going to set up a key binding for the spellbook so I'm going to, go into input make a new action mapping and we'll make this one um, spellbook and the spellbook mapping we're going to do is going to be T you can put it whatever you like but I'll do T okay so once you've got that you want to head over to your controller object and in your controller object we're going to go into our event graph and search for the spellbook event that we just made and from there we need to get the head up display and apply it to our character uh, uh, apply our toggle to it so the spellbook the uh, sorry the head up display ui is on the game mode so we need to get the game mode cast to the third person game mode get the heads up display and then toggle spellbook hit compile and let's test that out so in the game hit T and it opens up my spellbook now I can't click on these I can't drag on them yet but we can toggle the spellbook off and on as we freely like to in the next episode we're going to drop uh, adding the ability to drag and drop our abilities from our spellbook onto our action bar and that will be pretty much the end of our ability, sy ability system series so thanks very much for watching it's been a long journey so far we're almost at the end so thank you so much for uh, following along if you want to watch the next episode right now head over to patreon.com forward slash ryan laley we can watch that one plus many many others big shout out and thank you to all of my supporters for their support in helping me make this channel possible if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button, like this video, and if you have any questions, leave a comment below, and I'll try and answer them as best I can. Thanks again, everyone, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.